What's going on YouTube? Happy Saturday to everybody. Hope you guys are enjoying the start of your weekend. Give everybody a couple of seconds here to join us. And uh, as you can see, today we're going to be talking a little bit about how you can influence your sentence. I have two different screens I got to look at today. What's everybody doing this weekend? Anything positive? Anything fun? What's going on, Cynthia? Marianne, how are you? All right, so today we're talking a little bit about what can you really do to possibly influence the outcome of your sentencing and what does that look like and how does it work? Uh, the reason why we're doing today's video is we started a new program that a lot of you that have just recently come on board, um, some of you are part of it, some of you aren't. And what it is, it's, it's, it's coaching with accountability and with actual assignments on, on, aspects that are going to improve the likelihood of an overall positive outcome in sentencing. Now, people ask, what does that mean? So for an example, uh, we've got a client that during one of his coaching sessions, Jenny asked him to, to do a few different exercises that she wanted, to, wanted him to have completed by the, by the next session, which would be next week. And after he spoke to Jenny, he called me up and said, Hey, is this stuff going to be submitted at sentencing? What does this really have to do with my sentencing? How is this going to give me a shorter amount of time possibly in jail? Or how is this going to get the judge to want to give me probation? And you know, it's, it's hard to get people to see why they need to do some of these things initially, because when we, when we're going through this and I'm putting me right into the same, the same bucket as everybody else, because I was exactly where you guys are right now. And when I was going through it, all I wanted was immediate gratification. I wanted to do something right now that was going to completely change the whole dynamic of everything that was about to happen to create positivity or trying to create a positive outcome without putting a lot of work or a lot of effort into it. And part of the problem is, is that we deal with fighting control. We're so used to having control over everything, being able to control circumstances, being able to control influences. Uh, what's going on, Robbie, Chevy, George? Chevy just got, uh, Chevy went to, to trial, guys. So give Chevy some condolences in here. He went to trial. Um, he's really dealing with it really, really well. He feels very positive, but he did lose at trial. He's waiting for sentencing right now. So guys, feel free to ask Chevy some questions. For those of you that want to know what it's like uh, going to trial, Chevy is one of the few clients that actually decided to, to take it and go to trial. Uh, but we'll talk about that in another video. So how many of you can relate with having, now maybe you don't identify as having control issues, but how many of you right now feel like all you want to do is be able to do something that's going to control the outcome? You're trying so hard to control everything that's taking place and you're finding yourself getting very frustrated because you're not seeing the result from trying to control things. So when we enroll you in these coaching programs and we're giving you exercises that we want you to do, it's not necessarily, it's only purpose is not to reduce the amount of time that you might be looking at. It's not only to reduce the type of sentence. It's not only to help you qualify for RDAP. There's a whole nother purpose to it. Nobody can tell you how this is going to end. Nobody can tell you what you're going to be sentenced to. We could do everything to a blue in the face and the judge could say, I'm glad you did all those things. I don't care. I'm still going to give you the same exact sentence. So the only actual thing you really have control over is how you feel and how you act, how you think and what you do next. So if you are properly prepared for everything that's about to come, whatever is going to come, you are going to be prepared for it. 
Now, I know that may sound crazy right now because everybody's like, well, we're hiring you to help us reduce, to possibly reduce our sentence. I get that. So what happens is, is when we tell you, hey, you need to do community service, you need to go to speaking engagements, you need to keep track of your notes, you need to write a daily activity of what you struggled with today, uh, how you coped with that struggling, how you're going to deal with it in the future, how you plan to identify this before it attacks you. When we start embarking these type of challenges to you, you might sit here and go, what has this got to do with my sentencing? Well, what you're going to find happen is if you allow this process to work and you stop trying to control everything, if you allow the process to work, what will happen is eventually you'll start doing all of this for the right reasons. You'll start doing it because it makes you feel better about your day to day. It's going to make you have a better outlook on life. It's going to have it's going to increase your communication with your family, with your friends. And ultimately, what's going to happen is you are going to be doing everything for the right reason that these other things that you want to happen, like a positive sentence, whether it be probation or reduced or whatever it might be, whatever is going to happen, you're going to see the benefits happening because everybody else is going to see the change in you. The problem is, is when we first start doing this, we're not doing it for the right reasons. And that's okay. Just like when a lot of us sign up for RDAP, we all want that year off. That's the main reason why we get into RDAP, why we try to get into RDAP. We move heaven and hell to try to get into RDAP. We're moving mountains trying to get into RDAP. And what happens is, is you're now you're in the program and you're focused on that year off. And then slowly the program tools the day-to-day, -day, doing the same thing over and over again, dealing with your DTSs, going to meetings, holding each other accountable, opening up, talking about the real you, how you're feeling, what's affected you in life. You start to feel this change take place to where you're now really starting to benefit from things like RDAP. You're starting to feel these benefits take hold and it's no longer just about getting the time off. It's no longer just about possibly reducing the sentence. It's about change. It's about changing the type of people that we were and slowly transforming into transforming into the person we want to be. That is not an overnight process. And you guys hear me say it all the time. Change is a process, not an immediate event. And when you do not allow the process to take place, you're constantly battling with when is this going to help me? When is this going to make a difference? And if that doesn't change and you don't allow that to sink in, you're never going to get the benefits you want because you're always going to have these ridiculously high expectations, but yet you're not going to find yourself doing any of the actual work for any of the right reasons. So once people do grasp this, when you talk to people like Chevy, Chevy just got found guilty at trial on all counts and he's okay with it because he's properly prepared. He's properly processed to get to this point. He's put all of the work and effort in. He's done everything that he could possibly do. He was not willing to cooperate. He went to trial and without cooperating, he did everything that he could possibly do to, mit uh, to mitigate the circumstances. Now he hasn't been sentenced yet. So we're still working on the influence on that, creating the letters and he's still out there doing community. He's still out there doing community service. The point is, is everything that he's been doing to this point has created terms that he can now handle with what's coming next. Some of you may be religious, some of you maybe not. So I'm not here to preach or get all religious, but just to use this as an analogy, if you are religious and you do believe in God, if you're sitting there and saying, God, please don't let me go to prison. Okay. You're not asking the right question because that's, you know, chances are you're probably going to go to prison just because you ask God not to send you to prison doesn't mean you're not going to go to prison. You're asking for blind answers. But if you reevaluate what you're thinking and you, instead of saying, please don't send me to prison and you say something like, please give me the strength to deal with what's going to come next. You don't know what next is. Next is that variable that can be replaced by many different things. But once you are prepared for whatever is going to happen, once you give up control and you put control into the universe, into God, whatever it is, you allow what's going to happen, happen. And what you do is influence what you can. How do you influence a judge? Your personal narratives, your character reference letters, your day to day, your conduct, how you carry yourself, the people you're spending time with, community service, your mentor program. 
going to AA, NA, and slowly you'll find yourself doing this for the right reasons. Mentoring children, going to colleges, going to high schools, speaking engagements, speaking to, to youth about how your situation has caused you to be in this point in your life where now you're possibly facing a federal prison sentence. If you're doing that, it's showing a very vulnerable side and you're practicing humility. Humility is a very tough thing for a lot of us to deal with and practice and accept. Nobody likes to feel humiliated. Nobody likes to look, be looked down on. So when you start talking about what you did, it opens up this wound that until you open it up and you scrape all the poison out of there, the wound can't properly heal. Many of you are still stuck in the, it's not fair, I don't deserve this. Uh, people do way worse things than what I did and I don't see them going to prison. A lot of you may be watching the Bill Cosby case and you saw that he got found guilty and if you really start reading about it, he might be looking at maybe five years or less. There's even a possibility of probation or home confinement for him. And some of you were like, how is that even possible? I'm looking at all of this time and here's he was found guilty in all of these charges and he's looking at something less than that so then you want to say well he had more money or you look at all these reasons none of it fucking matters it doesn't matter why what matters is is you're in the situation you're in you can't control what's going to happen to bill cosby you can't control because it's not fair you can't control any of that what you can control is how you're going to work on yourself so you can accept what's coming next so if you're still in this point in your situation in your case where you haven't owned it 100 percent yet if you did anything at all regarding what they said you did if you're involved in any way you put yourself there now is the time to just embrace this and allow yourself to process and move past it. And by moving past it, you're going to allow yourself to create new habits. You're going to see things through a different light. And once you start seeing things differently, all these other things start to happen that you wanted to happen. But it's not fast. It's not immediate. So you can't do something today and expect to see the result tomorrow. you got to be willing to put effort, work, time in from now until that day of sentencing. And you can't let up. It's got to be full steam ahead. When you're having those bad days, that's when you got to pick up the phone and call somebody like me or somebody else that you can put in your mentor group. You have to be willing to find something that is going to push you through the hard days. We can all do things when it feels easy. We can all do things when we're super excited and we're all gung-ho. But the minute reality sets in and it's no longer new and you're like, well, I've already gone to three meetings. These things are really boring. I don't want to keep going. When you force yourself to do it, you start hitting a new level of achievement. You start hitting this new high and you start realizing that, hey, this positive energy that I'm putting out there, this just might be the ticket to my success. Maybe this is what Dan was talking about. There's no magic wand. There's nothing that me or any other prison consultant or an attorney is going to wave over your file and make the judge give you this super light sentence. It just doesn't work that way. The only way you're going to see a positive outcome is by you putting in the work. And that positive outcome can be so different for everybody. For somebody, that might mean a shorter sentence. For somebody, that might just mean going to a camp. For somebody, that might mean getting less than 10 years. We, to each their own. So you have to determine what you're going to consider a win and what you're going to consider a loss. And if you're considering something a loss, you really need to ask yourself why. I'm just going to read some comments over here. Is there any comments that I should be paying attention to? Oh, you're editing. I'm still watching. Is there any comments that I should... Uh... So who's going through something right now in regards to what we're talking about where you feel like you've lost control and there's so many things that are going on that you have no control over and it's causing lack of sleep, it's causing anxiety, it's causing maybe anger, it's causing issues within your family. 
Part of the coaching sessions that we do with our clients, this is what Jenny focuses on. Not everything is just focused on what we're going to do to shorten your sentence. Some of this is focused on you and your family, especially the life coaching aspect of it. And some of you are out there going, oh, life coaching, what a joke, ha ha, doesn't, who needs life coaching? Life coaching doesn't work. Um, it, it doesn't always work, you're correct. But for the right person that's working with the right person, when two people connect on a certain level, it absolutely can work because it's allowing you to to see things differently. You have to be willing to work on being vulnerable in order to be able to get through this. If you are a CEO of a company or you are in a high level of management, there's a lot of pride, there's a lot of ego there that's taking huge hits right now. You've been the provider for your family. You've been putting food on the table, a roof over your head, money in the bank, supplying everything that your family's ever wanted. And now that's being risked to be stripped away from you and you don't know how to deal with that because it's making you feel less than you don't feel like the man or the or the woman that you were or that you should be now you're starting to have a pity party you're starting to get down on yourself there's so many red flags that if you're really paying attention and you're really allowing yourself to get into a deep level of consciousness on this there's so many red flags that you could be alerting yourself of that you can almost immediately rip yourself out of this negative phase that you're in and find a way to regroup, redirect, and become way more positive in this journey. I wish there were so many things that I had done different going through this because I dealt with it the best that I could at the moment. But looking back, I allowed myself to really get very down, very negative, and not do a whole lot to increase my circumstance. I pretty much left everything up to my attorney. Marianne's looking for some positivity. Marianne? And that's a typical feeling, Marianne. And the, the reality is, is maybe it won't matter. But if you go into it with that attitude of what's the point, this isn't even going to matter, what's going to happen is you're not going to put the effort in. And you feeling like, what's the point? This doesn't even matter. That could be an excuse for you to not put the effort in because you're finding a reason not to work on it. Maybe you're not finding the right amount of time to get, to, to get yourself involved with this. Um, I, I can't stress enough that, look, our services, obviously our services aren't free. We, we, we all know that. We try to make them as affordable as possible all you guys need to do is really try to make it to a point where we can work with you. You have to find some level of flexibility. You have to find the value in what this can bring to the potential, not just, again, not just your overall sentencing outcome, but how you're going to process and deal with that overall sentencing outcome. Everything else tends to fall in place, good, bad, or indifferent. But it starts with you making a decision on how you're going to to change your mindset one decision at a time. Chevy's asking how long the PSR interview is. Uh, PSR can go anywhere from 30 minutes to two, two and a half hours. I would say the average PSR is probably somewhere an hour-ish. Uh, the more, it, look, the longer your PSR interview, in my opinion, the better. That means... You've got a probation officer that's that's really trying to to figure out what's going on. We hear some amazing stories from uh, from the the PSR interview officer that's doing it. Make sure you have your personal narrative. Bring in uh, you, you want to walk in there prepared. You don't want to go in there empty-handed, Chevy. You want to bring your personal narrative with you. You want to make sure you have all of your financials. You want everything laid out for him to make his or her job as easy as possible. But also, you want to give them as much information as possible. So later on, when they're actually creating this report, they've got a great source of information to draw off of. The same reason we have a lot of you going through these coaching processes with Jenny, where it's creating records of how many meetings you've gone to. It's creating records for how many speaking engagements you've went and given. It's giving records for how you've used accountability, how you've struggled with what you feel uh, you're struggling with in life, whether it's whether it's being anxious or whether it's feeling sorry for yourself or whether it's being depressed. When this, when all of this gets properly documented, this can be used later on. A, we can pull from this to help create your narrative. Also, your attorney can use this when he's drafting his motions or his sentencing memoranda that's going to eventually be going to the sentencing judge. It gives them more information 
to create the actual you. What happens is a lot of times we go into this and we give so little information to the uh, to probation. We give so little information to our attorney that when this info is conveyed later on, it's painting a very, very bleak picture of you with very little substance, very little meat and potatoes, and it's all just guideline and and law and case law. It needs to be more than that. The judge needs to get a very good idea for the type of person that you are, more importantly, the person that you were, the steps that you've made, and the progress that you've made, and ultimately, the judge has to be able to digest all of this and come up with a conclusion on his own as to why you either deserve a departed sentence, a probated sentence, uh, anything that's better than the guideline range or anything better than what you thought you were going to get. And that doesn't happen by just telling the judge you're a good person and you help people. It, it, just pointing out your your attributes is not what is going to give you the outcome that you're looking for. Doing it the right, re- the right way and showing how you've gotten to this point not just saying you're doing all these great things, showing the great things that you've done with with documentation from the time that you got in trouble to where you are right now. Nobody can can create that much facade. At some point, it starts to take root of who you are and it starts to change everything about you to where now you're doing things for different reasons. And if a judge can see that and smell that, You better believe it. It's a very good possibility that you will see a much better outcome than the person standing right next to you that did nothing. Absolutely worth it every time to put in that effort. Marianne says, I'm not feeling sorry for myself, but over three three years, I've spent so much on attorneys and forensic account. I don't have the extra to hire him. I envy you. I know you will benefit from Dan and his team. You know, I, I think we probably need to have another talk, uh, Marianne, because I know you're going through a struggle right now. It, we can make something work for you, get you some templates, something, but you know, you definitely, you definitely don't want to give up. You're getting some good advice in here. And I'm glad that you're still here in the room joining us, trying to, uh, trying to stay positive. Is there any way to know how long you have before you will need all of these narratives? Um, Junior, are you referring to the personal narrative or the character reference letters? If you're referring to the narrative, ideally, depending on where you're at in your situation, ideally, you want your personal narrative before you go to your PSR interview. Your character reference letters, really, they need to be done before sentencing. Uh, You want the judge to have those a couple of weeks prior to sentencing, but the personal narrative needs to be done sooner than later. (laughs) Marianne's an RDAP Dan sponge. Well, you know, a lot of this information, this isn't information that we haven't spoke about before. A lot of these videos, you'll hear a lot of common themes. Sometimes we regurgitate a lot of stuff. We just repackage it and and say it in a different way. And we feel like every time we say it a different way, we'll get somebody else that connects with it. So I try to find different ways, different vessels to deliver my message Um, because not everybody hears things at the right time or the same time. So that's part of why this consistency and over it sometimes it may seem a little redundant but it's really not because so many of us are in a spot where we've been told our entire lives probably what we needed to do to correct our behavior and create uh, correct our thinking but we didn't do it so a lot of us are in that vulnerable state right now because we're at all-time low and we're seeking information and now maybe you hearing it from me right now it's not anything new that you don't already know you have not heard you're hearing it again and you're like, there's that same common denominator that's been popping up in my entire life. That little voice, you know, I'm working at a job. A lot of people are like, well, I don't think I really did anything wrong. Here's what you ask yourself. Whatever you're in trouble for, you really, really have to analyze this and ask yourself a deep, deep question. Was there a point while you were working that you ever felt something didn't feel right? 
whether it was at a job, whether it was whatever else you were doing to get in trouble. However you got in trouble related to that incident, sometime in the past prior to you getting arrested or indicted or under investigation, was there anything that was going on that felt a little bit in a gray, felt a little bit shady, something that didn't feel exactly right? That's that intuition that you've ignored that's been trying to warn you, warn you, warn you. That was your little alarm going off that you just kept hitting snooze on. So now we're recreating this effect again. We're recreating a lot of these videos. We're recreating a lot of this content, hoping that it signals off that alarm and you stop hitting snooze and you realize it is time to wake up. You can no longer sleep through this and think that it is going to go away or you're going to find some way to get out of it. You're not going to control this situation with manipulation. You're not going to control this with slick tongue. It's not going to happen. As slick as you think your tongue is, the government's is way slicker. Way slicker. As much money as you think you may have to go throw at the government to get away with this, they got way more money, way deeper pockets. They will win every single time. Does that make it fair? No. You know, Chevy will tell you some stories later on that blew my mind with what happened during his trial. Stuff that doesn't sound fair, but hey. You can't get upset because the government plays dirty. You play dirty, that's how you got here. So the entire world, to some ex extent, in any type of a business atmosphere, there's some corruption going on in almost all areas of everything. The federal government is no different. There's human beings involved. They've got interest, motives, agendas, and your, you being a nice person, you being a human being, doesn't necessarily bother them they could care less just like a lot of the things that we did we weren't thinking about other people or how our choices were affecting other people at that point but now because we're on the other side of the stick we feel like hey you should be you should feel bad for me you should realize i'm not a bad person you shouldn't be coming after me so hard you shouldn't be manipulating the rules and the laws of the federal government to paint a an uglier picture than what may have really existed it's part of the consequence. It's part of it's part of the position you put yourself in when you allowed yourself to get into that trap. So now, once you can just identify that and come to terms with that, you can start to work your way out of it by no longer f focusing on what's wrong and what's negative and what's wrong with it. Focus on what good can you take from this situation. If you try hard enough, any situation in your life that's going on right now, in the past, or in the future, if you try hard enough, you can find something positive about it. You just have to be willing to focus on that. Once you redirect your, your focus to positive versus negative, the world really does open up. That might sound super cliche, but it is 100% true. I've witnessed it myself. I've seen tons and tons of you guys that have gone through this process. I've seen you guys witness it. So I don't just believe it. It's not just a theory. It's not just my thought process. It's a fucking fact. And if, you, and if, you're, and if you're arguing that right now and going, oh, that's bullshit, you are in denial and you are not willing to open your eyes because it's too hard. Maybe it feels too uncomfortable. Or maybe you're just not willing to put in the work. You want somebody else to do all the work for you. It's not going to happen in this situation. Nobody's going to care about this more than you are. What's up, John? Big John Goff in the house. John's one of our... John is such an awesome client. Let me tell you guys. So, John hired us well over a year ago now. And... Uh, John likes to give us credit, but I, I, I say it has a lot to do with what John did. John's case was dismissed, never, never got followed through, never went to prison, hired us before that, was so impressed with just, not, not with what we did, but just with the continuing effort that we put. Um, he actually, when I went to Florida, on his own dime, this guy hopped on a plane, flew to Florida for like four hours just to come have dinner with me and Shelly and then flew away, <laughs> flew in and flew out. And John's not a millionaire. He's not rich. This was, you know, this was an expense that affects his budget. So, you know, it's one thing if somebody's got a private jet on standby, but John doesn't have a private jet. John flew to Florida, came and saw us in Orlando and flew out a couple hours later. And uh, to me, that, that speaks volumes about the impact that this can have on some people. 
uh, and not everybody, you know, you guys, I'm sure everybody does research before they hire somebody. There's some idiots out there right now that are having a blast, you know, running my name through the ringer. Um, when you read, when you read the stupid posts, you can tell it's either from somebody from my past, somebody that knew me when I was younger, somebody that's just upset, but it just, you look at it, you can tell it's not from anybody real. Uh, so that's why I tell you guys about it. You know, I want you guys to do your homework. Do your homework, do your due diligence, know what type of person you're dealing with, and not just with prison consultants, with your attorney, with anybody you're really going to hire in life. You want to do your homework. You want to Google. You know, in today's day and age on the internet, everything's on the internet. But you have to be able to to dig through the content and information you're reading, and you have to be able to decipher what's real, what's not real, what's, you know, you can't please everybody. And what happens if you can't please everybody? You're going to get some people that just want to go talk bad because they weren't willing to put in the work. Uh, with as busy as with with as busy as we've become in the last couple of months, it's it's a it's bound to happen where you can't please everybody. And I'm not the type of person that's going to be bullied or pushed around or threatened. You're not going to call me up and say if you don't do this, I'm going to go post something negative about you online. I will encourage you to go post something negative about me online because then we can talk about it on YouTube and it just gives me something to make another video about. So if you're out there and you're mad at me for something, whether it's because I'm doing something that you wish you had done, uh, if I found something that makes me happy and it kills you to see me being happy, then go ahead, go butcher my name away. Uh, it won't be the first time, won't be the last time, but I can tell you what, I've had the feds kick in my door twice. I've been interrogated and mentally beaten down by the DEA, nothing anybody else is going to be able to do to me, whether it's go post BS online about me, throw frivolous lawsuits at me, nothing is going to be able to rattle me the way the feds did. So when that stuff happens, I look at it as I'm at a point in this industry, in the career that I'm trying to create for myself, where that's letting me know that I'm at a point where, where I'm getting somewhere because I'm pissing people off that don't like what I'm doing. And that means I'm doing something right because we all know there's negative people in this world. And if you allow yourself to get wrapped up and embedded in that negativity, you start to turn negative. That's why somebody says something to you, let it go. Don't make it, you don't have to go in there and fight with them and turn it into something that it's not because that's what they want. They want you to engage in this, in this evil, nasty battle. So many of you that are going through this right now, that's why so many of you are afraid to openly discuss your situation with your friends, with your family. You, you're ashamed of it. Stop being ashamed. You're going to find out once you start talking to people about your situation, a lot of you have family that don't know what's going on. Like maybe your husband's under indictment or maybe your wife's under indictment and nobody knows in the family. You're keeping it hush hush. For what? Who are you protecting? And you're not protecting anybody. It's because you're embarrassed and it's attacking your ego. Well, your little ego is not that important. And once you throw your little ego to the curb, you're going to find out that more people are going to relate with you than you would have thought. They're going to go, oh, wow, that's so horrible. You know what? So-and-so, my nephew, my uncle, oh, my, my brother, my father, my mother. These people are going to have stories. Almost everywhere we go, when we meet new people, whether it be strangers, whether it be business associates, at some point, this conversation comes up. What do you do for a living? I make, I make YouTube videos. Well, what do you make YouTube videos about? Prison consulting. Well, what is that? Well, I help people prepare that are getting ready to go to federal prison. You help them like learn how to fight or is it like the uh, the movie with Kevin Hart and Will Ferrell? I'm like, no, not really. It's more of how they can mitigate their sentence, how they can deal with anxiety, uh, what they can do to possibly shorten their sentence. And then you can see the wheels turning in their mind. And it's like, well, I went to federal prison. That's how I got into this. Then they start talking about it. They start asking questions. And within a few minutes, all of a sudden they start telling their story about something that took place in their life that impacted them to a similar situation, them directly, a friend, a family member, a child that went to prison or went to jail or was wrapped up in some sort of legal problems. But because we all pretend like we're, we live in these perfect worlds and we have a perfect cookie cutter house, we have a nice little car and we have the perfect Brady Bunch family, even though none of us have that, we really do any of you have the perfect Brady Bunch family? If you do, I don't know why you're on my channel because I don't believe you. 
And once we can all admit that we have flaws and we have demons and we've got ghosts in our closet and we've, we're wearing masks, we can all have this real conversation to go, oh my God, I feel so relieved right now. I didn't realize that you also were going through this. And it opens up your channel for communication with community. We preach it, we preach it, we preach it. Community as method. Ask yourself, what does that mean? When I say community as method, every day, people helping people, what does that mean? That doesn't mean this little community with me and the 17 people that are watching on YouTube right now. What this means is I am giving you the ability to see the power you have to go out and talk to people about the situation you're in to create awareness. We live in this. Look, the reason why you don't know anything about what you're going through is because nobody before you wanted to share the information. Now you're in a position and you don't want to share the information because it you're worried about how people are going to view you. Start sharing. That's how you're going to get this out there. That's how you're not going to feel alone. It needs to be bigger than, than where we're at right now. Because every day I get somebody calling me going, I wish I had found you sooner. I wish I knew something like this existed. It's too late for me. I've already been sentenced. My letters were horrible. I didn't know I could do any of these things. I'm so upset. By you telling one person you do not know what little ripple effect that is going to have later on down the line. So stop being selfish and share the information that you've learned. You don't have to say, go check out RDAP Dan. This isn't a, a shameless plug for me. This is you talking about your experience and how your experience can open up somebody else to now share something with you. And you might be able to go, oh, you know what? I had that same situation. This is what I did. This is what helped me. And you might be able to give somebody the, the smallest piece of, of advice from firsthand experience that could completely alter the course of the road they're going down. Because how many of you got started on this road and you realized how broken, how confusing, how not descriptive it was. You had no idea. There was no guide. There's no tour guide on this journey that you're on. For most of you, unless you're here on a regular basis, you are on a tour by yourself with a million different directions to go. And not all of them lead to the same place. That's the thing. Not every road leads to the promised land here. Very few roads, because very few roads are scary, they're dark, they're hard to get onto, and it requires work once you get on that road. So get on the right path, get on the right road, and you can't do it alone. You can't get on the road and put on your blinders, because then you're putting yourself back in that bubble that you were so upset existed to begin with because that's the reason you didn't learn the information you needed to learn because this information is so hard to research on the internet. It doesn't exist in the, in the form that it needs other than maybe this channel and a couple of other small channels that people have out there. We have the numbers people can share. So go share. That's pretty much all we really got today, guys. Um, did we post any new blogs? Maybe give them give them some links to the blog just so they have it. You know, keep 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 watching on our blogs, guys. Uh, keep checking out our blogs over rdapdan.com. Uh, CJ's posting it in the chat right now. It's also in the description of this video. We do release a lot of, we're, we're getting ready to re keep an eye out for the blog because we have a lot of people asking a lot of questions about Halfway House lately. Um, how to navigate through the Halfway House and what they can actually do in the Halfway House to try to increase the experience in the Halfway House. So we're going to be doing a blog about this and this blog is also going to be sent out through core links to a lot of uh, a lot of our clients and subscribers that are actually in prison right now that are getting ready to go to the halfway house. Donate. Oh, he also just put a link in there for if you want to help out one of the less fortunate people that are uh, that are in the system right now. There is a the little donate tab right there for the PayPal tab. Any donation is greatly appreciated and it goes to help people with clothes, hygiene products, um, basic food, things that you would need in prison. Not need, 
so to speak, but things that make your day just a little bit brighter, a little bit easier. And these are people that are struggling. So if you can help, there's a link right there in the description. It's also, I mean, I'm sorry, it's in the chat. It's also in the description of this video. Uh, biggest brown eyes, thank you. It's great. Very nice of you to say. But that's all we got. Um, I'm still feeling a little under the weather. We're going to start getting some, uh, some, some additional videos on here for you guys. A lot of people have been asking about you know, we don't want to sit here and make prison, prison workout videos, but we do want to create prison workout videos to give you guys, because I do feel like it's going to, a lot of you have this crazy fear of not being prepared for prison physically. Now I've told you guys, for most of you camps and lows, you really don't have much to worry about. You know, you don't need to be physically in shape for that. Now being in physical shape is definitely going to help your, your, your mental process 100% because looking better, feeling better, eating better, all of that stuff plays off of each other. So I've been neglecting pretty bad. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what tennis elbow is, but uh, Google it. It's a very, very painful injury that you get in your tendon, in your joint of your elbow. And it's, I can't even explain how painful it is. I literally had it on this arm for about four months. It went away within Three weeks of it leaving my right arm, it's like the damn thing just jumped to my left arm. It's super painful. It's been now four or five weeks since I've really done anything. I've been getting lazy. I've been kind of eating out of control. So uh, CJ and I, the weather's nice. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to, CJ comes from, from military, like Navy background. And um, he's explained that some of these, these Navy guys got some pretty serious workouts. So we're going to. He, CJ doesn't know it yet, but we're going to put CJ through some prison workouts with me. It'll probably do him better than me right now because I'm so out of shape, but it is going to be something that we're going to journal. Um, we got a couple little GoPro cameras that we bring around with us pretty much everywhere we go. We got, we got a little GoPro backpack that's got some cameras in it that we set up in the car. We set up on the bikes. Um, so we will be journaling some of this to show you guys and it'll give you an idea of what you can start doing now to get ready to get ready for the type of workouts you may want to incorporate once you get into prison. So it should be fun. Uh, we are going to try to do a little, somebody else has been asking for some cooking stuff, like what kind of food they make in prison and how can you utilize the commissary. Uh, so after I thought about it, this might be me just justifying a way to make a fun video, but it really is educational to the point of people going in prison. Um, you are going to look, you're going to need stuff to do in prison. You're going to find ways to kill time. And one of the best ways to kill time is getting with a good group of guys that you're having or, or women and having awesome conversation, positive conversation, uh, talking about your, your experiences, talking about how you're going to do better once you get out. But while you're doing that, you may take up a nice little hobby of preparing food in prison, in the unit, commissary items. So we're going to show you some fun commissary dishes you can put together to create some additional positive energy that you can throw out there. So I think the first thing we'll probably be making, what do we say? Prison nachos, right? Nachos. Nachos. Some prison nachos. Basic, simple, easy. Anybody can make it really tasty. Get, to get, get together with a group of your guys once you're in prison. Everybody chips in, buys a little bit. It turns into a whole day experience and you found a way to to stay focused, stay positive, keep your mind right and also do something fun in the process. Not everything that's good for you. It's got to be boring, right? You can find some stuff that's also exciting and fun and taste really good. Just don't do it all the time or else, you know, that's me getting fat. Mike Winners, big donation. Mike Winners, you just won the million dollar jackpot. There'll be a million dollars coming to your, uh, tell me, tell me, coming to your doorstep, Mike. No, Mike donates money all the time. Mike was actually a client of, Mike is a client of ours. And he still donates on a regular basis. So high five in the air, Mike. Appreciate you. Um, those donations are greatly appreciated. You do not know how much that $10 matters to somebody like Sean Cowgill, who is just doing what he can. And he's, look, the guy never asks for a penny. That's why we love giving him money because he's not asking for anything. And he's doing what he can with his time. He budgets his money is a little bit of money that he gets in prison and he makes it go a long way. So $10 will go a long way for somebody in prison. So thank you, Mike. Very much appreciated. 
What was Chevy asking? How did you get your MP3 file data from your MP3 player? Okay, so what happens, Mike? I wish I had my little MP3 player here. Where is that little MP3 player? It's it's in your uh, tackle box. Is it? I think so. My tackle box. The tackle box. What would we do without CJ? So this is your little MP3 player, Chevy. And as you can see, it's got a port on the side. It's the same port you would use for like any Android charger. It's just a little uh, USB charger. So what happens is, is the computers in prison in your unit, they've got a little charging port that comes out of it. When you log into the computer with your username, you plug in your MP3 player and it syncs up to the prison, we'll call it iTunes, but it's prison's version. I forgot what it's called, like something through CoreLinks. CoreLinks version of iTunes that has a very, very, very extensive long list of music to choose from. Now it is unedited. It's, uh, you know, it's radio versions. Um, once in a while, a swear word slips through somehow, but you can almost get any song you can imagine all the way back from like the sixties to top current hits of whatever you want. You got to pay for them. Uh, I don't remember the price. I only, I, I wish I could show you this, but it's dead and you have to revalidate it every 14 days. So every 14 days, you got to plug it into the kiosk and revalidate. If you don't validate it after the 14th day, it just says, validation required once you leave prison obviously i can't plug this into the prison kiosk because i'm no longer in prison so it's got prison firmware from the bop on here the only way i could listen to my music now is i'd have to send this in to sandisk that's who makes it i'd have to send it into them pay 20 bucks they would unlock it open it up and it would just be just like the regular version you know it's got a silicone case on it so that's what it actually looks like um it's, they sell these in the store. It's just this one has a clear back on it so you can see what's in it. And But I have like 15, 20 songs on it. And I, I would actually probably never really use it. Actually, it probably would be pretty you good. Send it in and see how it comes out. Yeah, maybe we'll send it in just to make a YouTube video out of it. But, uh, but yeah, that's how, that's how you use it. Pretty easy. You got to pay for the songs though. 20 cents a song, something like that. It get, gets expensive if you're big into music. But it's also got an FM radio on there that you can just listen to regular music. You can use it to tune into whatever station they're watching movies on or TV shows. You go to the FM station on there, on here, and you can listen to the radio or whatever they're watching in the TV room. You can listen to that on here as well. That's what I mostly used it for, radio, TV. And I recycled the, I don't know, the 14, 20 songs I had on here. I listened to those same songs every single day to the point now where one of those songs plays out i hear it and immediately brings me back to walking the track and it's not a bad feeling i actually enjoy remembering how much was the player this was 60 bucks ish may may have gone up by now you can't buy these used like if it was a, a am fm walkman a lot of times you'll see those on there too and those don't require you to revalidate every 14 days. So you could just buy one of those off of another inmate. You're not supposed to, but there's ways around it. You could buy one of those probably for, you know, a fraction of the cost of what it would cost new. But if you want an MP3 player, you got to buy it brand new because you can't validate somebody else's MP3 player. So if somebody gives you one, once that 14 days is up or they get moved to another unit, it can no longer be validated. All kinds of cool little trinkets in prison. Um, and we actually have a whole pile of stuff over here. Hold on, I got a call. Let me take this call real quick. Oh, it's somebody calling me from 1980. Hold on a second. <laughs> we found this old phone that I used to use as a kid making little videos. So I thought that would be interesting to show you guys. Some of you probably still have these laying around your house. But yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> CJ's like, this has nothing to do with the video. Cut. But, you know. All right, guys. That's about all we got for today. We're going to go uh, 
We're going to go wrap this up and head off to the house. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Um, remember, as bad as it seems right now, things do get easier. Things do get better. At some point, you'll realize that, and that's when things will start to happen for you. One day at a time, people helping people, community as method. Remember, go ask yourself when you get off this, write it down. Community as method, what does that mean to me? Ask yourself a deep question about what that means to you. And I would love to hear on your next, on the next time we're live, those of you, I would love to hear from you what community as method means to you. I'd be really interesting to hear on your take on how you perceive that. So me and my amazing RDAP Dan <laughs> ID card. This is prison related. I can show this, right, Chess? Sure, I approve it. CJ approves. So there's your prison card, and I'm out of here, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. Love every single one of you. See you Monday. Uh, interview. It won't be live, though. We're doing an interview Monday with an attorney that's going to prison, but it won't be a live interview. Thanks, Mike. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.